Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What am I talking about today? Well, today, on Day Roll, is going to be a new banner. And that new banner is going to feature none other than... Da Vinci. Yeah! <laughs> so we're going to be talking about the two beginners that are going to be coming up today. Leonardo Da Vinci Writer and Anne Bond and Mary Reed Archer. If you want a quick... Um, go for obviously anniversary is coming up and so is summer um, you're probably better off saving for that especially if you're someone who's a little bit more free to play but if you have a little bit of wiggle room to save for something then I think it might be worth summoning for one of these units <laughs> that's on here if you are in perhaps in need of them so let's go right into them I'm gonna start with the archer which is Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed um, uh, who are limited swimsuit servants that are unfortunately not very good, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. And Bond and Mary Reed. Uh, they are an archer, like I said. They are of one quick, two arts, two buster. On their quick card, it is three hits. On their uh, arts card, it is two hits. On, on their buster, is one. Extra five hits. Active skill is Beach Flower A+. Increases party's attack for three turns. Increases critical star generation rate for male allies for three turns. Uh, the attack up on level 10 is 19.5. And the male star rate is 41% on a cooldown of 5. Their second skill, after a strengthening, because they God knows they needed it, increases on critical star absorption for one turn, charges on MP gauge, and then gains crit stars. 600% absorption, the MP up is 30%, and the cool star cool and the star amount is 15. Cooldown 6. Third skill, if you want to know what the skill was beforehand, just absorption and 15 stars. They didn't feel the need to give more than 15, which is okay, it's a choice. Uh, Pirate's Honor C+. Plus. Increases on attack for 3 turns. Will grant self a gut status for 1 time. Revives with 1 HP. 500% chance to reduce own debuff resistance by 50% for 3 turns. It's a demerit. And the attack up is 25.5%. On a cooldown of 5. Their passive skills are Magic Resistance D and Independent Action A. Their third append skill is an Anti-Rider Attack Damage Aptitude. Because trust no one, not even yourselves. Uh, their Noble Phantasm is the Caribbean Freebird, Act 2, Wings Abreast as if Trees with Entwined Branches. Rank C++, it's Buster, it's Anti-Unit, it hits 9 times, it deals damage to one enemy, it further deals damage to them based on own remaining HP, additional damage formula equals 600%, um, with the lowest, um, if you get them to the lowest amount, that's good. Uh, the, the lower your HP to 1 HP, the stronger it becomes. Um, the, I guess the, I guess if you're exactly at 1 HP, you get the full 600%, and it's a percentage based, depending on your level from then on. There you go. I'm trying to explain this stupid mechanic. NP level 1, 600%, and if you get her to NP level 5, that's 1,000. Their overcharge effect is reducing their defense for 3 turns. The charge up, a uh, charge level 1, it is 10%, and if you get it to the final charge level, it is 30%. And that is Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. And Bonnie and Mary Reed are not very good units. I have, um, this is one of the units I've had and I have tried so hard over the years to get them to be any form of good. And it has just never worked out for me. <laughs> the damage is never worth it. It's just not really, like, even if you got them to 1 HP, what happens next? You get, like, a single hit. And then maybe their guts is up. And this is a cooldown of 5, so it might be up again. But they're still being left with a single HP. It's just, like, not that inducive. Even someone who has a similar effect to this, Hijikata, he can heal after he's done the damage and maybe can survive a little bit longer. I also think he has multiple stacks of guts. Um, just to be sure, let me look at him. I'm almost positive he has multiple stacks of guts. Uh, there he is. Here's the Pickle Man. Um, grant self status one time revives with one HP and this is stackable with other guts that's what it is um, yeah the only thing that I could really possibly say about this is that this guts is not uh, it doesn't get stacked with any of the other guts but 
it is permanent because it just revives him with a single HP, which is fantastic. That means you cast it once and you don't have to worry about it. The problem is, is that this ability is also tied to an increase of their own attack. So if you want to increase their attack after this goes away, but your guts hasn't triggered, there's a good chance you'll just be missing out on your guts then because this doesn't stack. If it did stack, it'd be a little bit better. And then the 500 chance to reduce own debuff resistance by 50% for three turns, that's just bad. I don't. I think when the time that they made them, they figured this ability is too good. A unit that just has infinite guts, not infinite guts, but it, it never goes away unless it's removed specifically or the, it triggers, is too good and it also has an attack. So we have to put some kind of demerit in it so that you feel the pain when you're using it. And then all it does is just make it so that this many years later after the release, it just feels redundant. Why would you do this to them? They are not doing, they're not moving heaven and earth like that. Um in order to be considered that much of a, a threat of any single kind. This ability is basically just charisma with uh, specifically just an increase of star generation for males, which is, eh, it's, it's fine. But yeah, end of the day, I don't really like units who have this type of effect. I think Hijikata, you can make a use for him because there's plenty of ways to get him down to a single HP and kind of exploit it for a kind of single turn run, and then that can be useful because he's a berserker. And so he has class advantage against very many classes, excluding a couple, like mainly just one, I think, which is the um, the foreigner class. Every other one they should have a bonus against, unless it's a very specific thing, like they don't take damage from berserkers or something. Um, they take like neutral damage from berserkers, forgive me. Um, so it ends up being, I'm just not the biggest fan of this kind of design and this kind of unit, which is a shame because I do like, um, I do like them. It's a real shame. I've tried over the years to try and do something with them and it's nothing more than like a silly gimmick. And if you're down with silly gimmicks, go for it. Go with God. <laughs> they are limited and they are hard to get and they are very nice units to look at, but that's about the best I can say about them is that they're that <laughs> and it pains me to say it it's not like i want them to be bad i would love it if they were good i feel like if they just got a couple more buffs here and there like the it, all their skills need to be kind of like retuned this ability in theory can do a lot of damage already so it's not like they're wanting for damage in this case but it is all tied to them having exactly one hp so yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely one of those units where you get them and you go, yay, they're limited, so I don't have to worry about getting more of them, but that's basically it. I don't think they're worth chasing or anything like that, unless you're just huge fans of Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. That's about it. And that's the unit that are with Da Vinci. It's unfortunate, because I feel like she actually has the weakest of the four. Actually, Marie Antoinette Caster might actually be weaker than them. <laughs> But that's just simply because she was a AoE caster being made back in the day, so she has a little bit of... But she has a little bit more survivability to her, and I think her kit ends up being a little bit more interesting in that kind of regard. Um, and maybe I'm just being extremely hella biased against this type of ability that I just don't like. I'm actually kind of curious to see how others kind of feel about it. Let me see if I can just quickly pull up something to tell me, like, hey, how do others feel about this? This is like the easiest way for me to figure out just real quick. But to me, I've never thought that they were very good in any capacity. That has not changed over the years. Mm, apparently some people are maybe a little bit more nicer to me. So it might just be a, a skill issue on my part. Who knows? Go with your heart on that one. This unit, I know for 100% fact, is good. Because it is Da Vinci Rider. And this is a unit that's way more up my alley. A Leonardo da Vinci writer. Um, she's a writer. <laughs> it's the writer form of da Vinci. She's also a limited servant um, and a, st a story related uh, limited an one. Servant. Yeah, an anniversary servant. That is correct. She has one quick, two arts, two busters with four hits coming in on the quick, uh, four hits on the arts, and two hits on the buster with four extra hits. Her active skills are Golden Rule Body EX, grants self debuff immunity for three turns, recovers own HP every turn for three turns, charges own NP gauge every turn for three turns, HP regen uh, increase of a thousand. The NP regen is twenty percent, and the cooldown is six. Uh, the second skill is the Excel Turn B, grants self evasion for one attack, increases one uh, increases own critical damage for one turn. The increase in critical damage is fifty percent, and this is on a cooldown of four. 
Uh, Dream upon the star is D. Increases party's MP damage for three turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 10% and overcharges the party's MP by one stage for one turn. 30% uh, MP damage and the cooldown is 5. Her passive skills are Riding B, Territory Creation C, and Overhaul E. Uh, the append skill is a anti-alter ego damage attack aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is a Rank B Arts AoE that is the beautiful journey, the one who is beyond the border. Three hits, deals damage to all enemies, charges party's MP gauge by 20%, and the damage at level 1 is 450%. If you get her all the way to level 5, it's 750%. Increases on Arts performance for one turn is the Overcharge effect, and at level 1, it is 20% added. And if you get her all the way to the final Overcharge level, which is 500%, it is 40% to Arts. Um, for the single turn, and she does have a spirit tongue dress as well, which is just this costume right here, which is pretty nice. It is, a, yeah, her arcade costume because Da Vinci was actually on arcade first, wasn't she? Yeah. Yes, this version of was she was the first um damn you arcade unit because they got her and they were like, what the hell? When are we gonna get our version of Da Vinci? But I think their version is like a caster, maybe. Their version is a four star. A four star? Let me see. I should be able to find it in Da Vinci's. Yeah, it is a four star writer still. Okay, arcade. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the arcade units that was. It was definitely the first one where I was like, damn, I wish I had that. And then they kept releasing units like that. So anyway, that is Da Vinci writer. Uh, how good is she? I think she's great. She's a fantastic unit. She's a solid unit. She is uh, amazing at farming. She can also be used outside of farming. Um, uh, my favorite example <laughs> is that back when I was using my JP account, back on the, when the, when the game was launched, I was using, uh, Da Vinci to beat up on the final boss of, uh, who was the, who was it the final boss? It was of Sol Solomon, the final boss of Solomon using her and another Da Vinci, and I think it was maybe Voyager, and I was just creating a... No, it wasn't Voyager, I think it was Castoria. Um, and I was just creating an infinite loop of just never getting hit by anything, because Da Vinci, the both the Da Vinci's with their 20% would be constantly increasing the NP of everyone. They were arts-focused, so you were just constantly shooting off NPs. Their second skill of overcharging made it... Their third skill, overcharge made it so that Castoria always had at least two of her... She always had, like, the second overcharge level for her NP, so everyone always got at least two hits, and it was uh, hilarious because everyone was underleveled. <laughs> this was, Da Vinci wasn't even Max Ascension or anything. Mine was. And it was a hilarious bit because I said, I can't believe how easy this is. This caused me so much trouble back in the day, and it was just made completely... It was a joke, basically. So I think Da Vinci... Rider is a fantastic uh, unit. There are other options than in terms of AOE writers for um, arts. for arts. Obviously, the biggest one is probably um, Habitrot because Habitrot is free to play, and Habitrot also has an eighty percent on her for in terms of looping. That is kind of insane. As long as you don't accidentally use the ability that kills her. <laughs> you should be fine using them. And is also a free-to-play option, so it's a very good option for a lot of people. That said, it's a free-to-play option that requires you to beat Lost Belt 6. And I know for a, fact, for a fact, not a lot of people have actually beaten Lost Belt 6. I have even gone into the point where they have done the intro to Lost Belt 6 and are, in general, in need of just a little bit more time to kind of get there. Um, it's real rough. Uh, there are other options as well. Nemo comes to mind. Odysseus. It's a lot of units that I have usually put on my, the back of my head as, damn, it's kind of a shame that they are arts writers because Da Vinci just does so much for the team that I don't ever see a way I would ever use them. The upcoming uh, Biken. Yes, the upcoming Biken is an arts AoE unit who is writer. Um, uh, Moe. Summer Mo is a very good one. She's a little bit better in terms of getting her NP to... Uh, Summer Mo was able to loop back before people were really looping with arts. Like, that, it was enough with Tomomo, with that busted-ass setup of just using two Tomomos, and that was enough for her. <laughs> and sometimes even... You didn't even need that much. I was able to get her to loop without even using a Tomomo back in the day. 
Um, so that obviously means she's a fantastic for that. But she does kind of suffer just a little bit in damage if you did not get extra NP copies for her. Some other ones that are on specifically on the NA side. That's about all I can remember from the top of my head, but there is obviously more. There is not more. So Nemo, is, Emo, is Nemo not AoE? No. Is he single target? I'm pretty sure Nemo. This entire time, I thought Nemo was AoE. No. Damn. I've just been completely wrong. I've been shitting on Nemo for no reason. To be fair, it's resentment built up from... Mm. Yes. It is. <laughs> I think the Nemo thing is a, is a longer issue of... I think uh, Santa Nemo is AoE arts. Santa Nemo, okay, is AoE arts. But he's not writer. Santa Nemo's he not... Writer. He is writer? Okay. That's different, then. Um... I've been saying that the the other version was Normal. Yeah, that's crazy. That's funny. Um but yeah, that's basically it. Da Vinci's really good. I think she's probably worth going for. I have always wanted to get her back. I was never able to get her on the NA version of the game. I've only ever had her on the JP version of the game, which makes me so sad. Because my JP version is nowhere near as good as my NA box in terms of units that are actually leveled and actually ready to go. So it always feels like she's wasted away in that account for so long. Um, I would love to get her on here. But because of the way that things are kind of going with the anniversary and summer and then at the end of the year, as someone said, what's happening at the end of the year? The answer is the Lost Belt 7 units. Um, the end of the world is coming. The end of the world is coming for, as, as for me and my brother. It starts brother. on Christmas. It starts on Christmas and it is bad the lost belt 7 crew start what is maybe one of the worst times to be summoning because every month has basically banger after banger after banger there's no there's no breath periods really the there's maybe entire month of january is an endless slew of summoning yes it is it is rough. If you have not started preparing for next year, please start preparing for next year. I think I'm going to start a video sometime around anniversary time because I need to see how much anniversary hurts me and how much that um, summer hurts me to see how to plan for next year because next year it's going to be rough. For example, the the big one of the big units is something that we weren't even aware of. Um, Draco has not returned on a chances <laughs> are. She's only been featured on a super expensive version of the GSSR that you had to specifically choose her to be one of the units on there. You and she don't even have a chance to get her. Still don't have a chance to get her. There was a collab, a collab banner that featured all collab units and they specifically left off Draco. So they have made it so that the first beast and the only beast in Fago is borderline impossible to get. So... With that in mind, that's what you, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at my quartz and I'm looking at my tickets and I look at Da Vinci. I say I want you, but I I just can't justify it. Like my best chance of getting Da Vinci is when she had when she was here for anniversary, and I missed that opportunity. And I just cannot find. She never releases at a good enough time for me to kind of go for something. The thing I had to probably wait for is likely a GSSR of some kind. Because she just keeps releasing at the absolute worst times for or me. Or after summer. Or after summer. Sometime around that. It's it. Yeah. It's it's very rough. But anyway, I think she's definitely worth going for. If you do end up going for her, I wish you the best of luck. I think she's a really fun unit. She's a really good unit, and she's a multi multi purpose kind of unit. Um. And yeah, you can't go wrong with Da Vinci. That's the end of the video, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one, whatever it may be. I need to get back to grinding on um, Mississippi Mythizers uh, and, and grinding the game in general as I try and get back all my QP to level up all the new units that I have because I was not anticipating actually pulling all of the uh, both Bunyan and uh, Daikakoten, so now I have to actually go back and grind up QP. <laughs> Uh, in between grinding up Mississippi Mythicizers, so fun times. That's the end of this video, though. I'll be back to talk about another summon banner. Uh, let's see. The next one after Da Vinci, and then, which is the another Da Vinci banner, is gonna be on the 26th. So you'll see another video on the 26th, and that'll be the final summon for this vi for uh, 
this batch right here of um, Learning with Manga pre-release campaigns. Very, very weird pre-release campaign just because there was no part two to this event. So this technically counts as a before part and a part two. It's really weird. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.